This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Thank you, all the Torah Anytime listeners. Thank you, Rabbi Yosef Yafi, for recording the Shir. Hashem should give you only Berachah. Thank you for all the listeners. Thank you for all the nice emails people are sending that they're watching the Shir Torah. Thank you so much. It gives me tremendous chizuk. I want to say over Ashgacha Pratis that happened just from these classes to tell Rabbi Yosef Yafi and all the listeners. Uh, so recently, if you remember, we're trying to bring out the message out there. That whoever wants to start learning Torah on the phone, there's a free service out there. That all you're going to do is email yakovrahimi at gmail.com. And we will try to match you up with a mentor, boys with boys and girls with girls. And Mezat Hashem Na'agdib Torah, so you can actually start learning Torah. So recently, somebody sent me a message from Arizona. A person sent me a message from Arizona that for the last couple of months, they started having a way to shuvah. They started having thoughts of repenting, that they want to come closer and closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, closer and closer to Hashem. And they came across one of the videos over here, uh, recorded by Yosef Yafi on Torah anytime. And they heard me saying, if you want to learn Torah, reach out to me. All you're going to do is email me. And they actually emailed me. And then they shared with me that the last couple of months, they wanted to be Chosei B'Teshuvah. And they prayed to Hashem, Hashem, send me a rabbi that I'm not going to be intimidated with because I want to start learning Torah. This person was praying to Hashem, I want to start learning. He's praying and he's praying and he's praying. Then he came across this video of me screaming to him by the screen, call me, we'll learn. And then he actually emailed me and now he's actually learning with somebody in Torah mates, not me. Somebody with Torah mates is learning with him. So you see Rabotai, it's an unbelievable thing. People miscalculate the power of reaching out to others. So whoever is listening right now, think of one friend that you think will gain to learn with someone on the phone. Tell them about Torah anytime. Tell them about all these programs. You can really change the whole world. Don't think now, right? Are you thinking, okay, all it is, I got to call my friend. Maybe he'll start learning. Maybe she'll start learning. Maybe not. Think in the long run, 20 years from now, if they start learning because of you now, think 20 years from now, 50 years from now. You're talking about a family. You're talking about children that are going to be Shomer Shabbat. Children that are going to learn Torah because of your effort of going out of your box, out of your dollar month, going out of your comfort zone, and to actually reaching out to friends and tell them about the free service, they can start learning Torah on the phone. So any person that's listening, what I'm asking for you is to please try, try to think of at least one Jew that you think can gain from this program, where we offer a free service to learn Torah on the phone with them. And if you're interested, please email me, yaakovrahimi at gmail.com. Now this is Parashat Parashat Shemot, such beautiful lessons, unbelievable. The Pesach says, V'yikom melech chadash al mitzayim asher lo yada et yosef. V'yikam melech chadash. A new king arose, a new king got elected in Egypt. Asher lo yada et yosef. Who did not know the famous, famous, famous tzaddik, righteous rabbi, famous minister, the prince who saved Egypt, Yosef, Joseph. Says Rashi right away, what, do you mean, what does it mean that a new king arose that he did not know who Yosef was? How do you become the king of Egypt? And basically, when you become a king of some place, you must know the politics behind things. You have to know the culture. You have to know the outbringing, the neighbors, how it started, what's going on. So how can the Pasuk say, a new king became a king of Egypt? A new king rose, rise up to the top, who did not know Yosef HaTzadik. How is it possible not to know Yosef who saved the whole country and basically saved the whole world with the starvation? Remember, Yosef HaTzadik was the genius who invented the whole concept of the economy in Egypt. He saved Egypt and the whole world, and Egypt became a very wealthy country afterwards. So says Rashi, Asheh yada. What does it mean, the Pasuk? What does the Pasuk mean that he did not know Yosef? Asa atzma ki'ilu lo yada. He convinced himself as if he never knew who Yosef was for the people of Egypt. Now, it sounds like a very pashut, easy reading Rashi, but there's a tremendous lesson from this Rashi. Let's read it again. What does it mean the new Melech, Hadash, the new king, may believe he does not, may make it sound as if he doesn't know who Yosef was? Asa atzmo. He told himself and he may believe. He faked it. He lied to himself. He convinced himself. As if he never heard of Yosef at Sadiq in the first place. Ask her, Moshe Sturmach, a beautiful question. When you want to describe this Paro in the Torah, this Paro was vicious. He murdered Jewish children like the Chazal tell us, 300 Jewish babies a day. 
He killed 300 Jewish babies a day. And he did so much bad things, such horrible things. When you want to describe who is this new king that's going to be a rasha, an evil king, the Pasuk should have said, Vayikam Melech Hadash, a new evil king, a new dictator has taken over Egypt. Rasha, Merusha, Yimach, Shemo. That's not what the Pasuk says. It says, Vayikam Melech Hadash, a new king came to Egypt. And let me describe to you who this new king is. You know how bad he is? Asher lo yadat Yosef. He may believe. He did not know. He may believe as if he didn't know what Yosef did for the Egyptian people. What Yosef did, all the good that Yosef brought to the Egyptians to Mitzrayim. Says the Mershish Tarbach, we learn from here a tremendous lesson. The terrorist says, you know how evil Paro was? We don't have to tell you all the Ritzichas, all the murders that he did. All you have to do is tell us the Shoresh, the root of why he was so evil. You know why he was so evil? Because he was a person that knew how not Tibi Makil told. He was a Kfui Tuva. He was a person that did not recognize the good others did for him. So Paro was such a Rasha, says the Pasuk. He was such a Rasha, he was a Kfui Tuva. He was a person that worked on himself to deny and, and not recognize the good people did for him. Because in order to be evil, in order to be a bad person, chas shalom and commit such crimes like Paul did, you first have to be an evil person inside. And how do you become an evil person inside? When you're a person that doesn't know how to recognize the good that others did for you. When that person, chaser shalom, convinces himself, I don't need anybody, nobody did to me any favors, I don't need you, it's fine, I'm my own person. When a person does it to himself, yosef, he becomes an evil person and then it can lead to murders and all the bad stuff that Paro did. So says the merchant Sternbach, why did the Pasuk, when it wants to describe the new king, why did it say, yosef, he did not know Yosef, he did much bigger crimes. Say the new king that killed people, the new king that, that, that murdered and kidnapped so many Jews. So the answer is because the Torah wants to tell us that the shorash, the root of all evil, starts when a person makes believe. Asat smoke, he makes believe, he convinces himself, nobody did to me any good. And when a person convinces himself and he becomes a kfui tova, kfui means you cover the good. You may believe as if no good was done to you. When a person doesn't appreciate what others do for him, when Paro didn't appreciate what Yosef did to Mitzrayim, that led to evil. Because the Gemara and the Chazal tell us in the Midrash in this Pasuk, when one doesn't know how to appreciate what his friends and his family does for him, it's going to lead him not to appreciate what Hashem does for him. It starts with denying and not saying thank you to your friends and family, but it's not going to end there. It leads to becoming a person that's denyful of how much Hashem Hashem gives him. Hashem gives you life. Hashem gives you air. Hashem gives you food. Hashem gives you an awesome world. Another day, another day, another day, another day. When a person doesn't know how to say thank you to his friends and family, he's going to become a person chas shalom that doesn't know how to think Hashem. Not only not think Hashem, actually not keep his Torah and deny that he even exists. That's how bad a person can get, says the Midrash in this Pasuk. So when the Torah wants to describe how bad Paro is, all they had to say was, you know how bad Paro was? You know how evil he was? He was a person that made believe he had no clue how much good Yosef did to the country. And you know what? When a person convinces himself that no good was done to him, that's going to lead him to such evil, such evil like Paul, and it led him to murder. This is a tremendous lesson, Abotai. A tremendous lesson I'm talking to myself. Every person has to make sure he's not a kfui tova. He's not a person that doesn't know how to be thankful to what others do for them. Thankful and appreciative of how much Hashem gives us. When a person doesn't know how to be thankful, it can lead him to such bad things. That's why it's so important to remember the good others do for one another. Another ride that we have is by Esav. The Pasuk tells us, we know Esav and Yaakov, the two brothers. Yaakov was a tzaddik. Uh, Yaakov ishtam yeshevo alim. Yaakov sat down in the tent and learned Torah. And when the Pasuk wants to describe, and the Torah wants to describe Esav HaRasha, who did horrible things, he kidnapped, he raped, he murdered. The Pasuk says by, by Esav, Ish Sadeh, a person that hangs out in the field. And Rashi says, what does Ish Sadeh mean? When you want to describe Esav, what does it mean he's a man of the field, Ish Sadeh? Says Rashi, Adam Bated, he was a person that did nothing. As of Shem Shem Pinkis, the Torah wants to describe Esav, and Esav was a Rasha. All you have to say about him, that he was a Ish Sadeh, he was a person that hung in the fields, 
That's all he did wrong? You talk about a person that murdered, raped, and stole. So say that. What does the Torah only say? Esau was such a Russia. He was an Isadeh. He was a person that basically wasted his time. Adam Bated Isadeh. Says of Shishim Pinkis, the same point that we learned in this expansion by Paro. The source of evil of Esav. How, what led him to murder? What led him to rape and to steal? What was the shorish? What was the root of the problem that led him to such sin? Adam Bated. Because Esav belie- believed in a life of wasting time. He believed in batala. He believed in literally wasting your life away on nothing, nothing, nothing productive. He believed in just sitting around and getting entertainment 24-7 and do what I want and not what's right. So much that he, when he was starving, he was so hungry for food. He was such a person that didn't have patience to do what's right. When he was starving, he sold the Bechora. He sold the big zikhut, the big merit of the Bechora, being the firstborn and having a lot of mitzvot. He sold it for lentil soup to Yaakov. What does that show you? It shows that Esav had no value of spirituality. He had no value of Torah mitzvot. All he valued was desires. Esav was Adam Bated. He was a person that lived for desires, lived for entertainment and all these physical enjoyments. Such a person, you think it's going to end there. Such a person, it's going to roll and roll and roll. Chas shalom, lead to tremendous crimes. That's when the Pasuk says that Esav was such a Russia. All the Torah had to say was, Isadeh, he was a person that did nothing with his time in this field. Why does the Torah say it like that? Because the Torah wants to teach us a lesson. You know what's the root of sin? The root of sin is when a person, chas shalom, looks at himself and thinks that life is about doing nothing, nothing productive, just sitting down and wasting time on movies, on Netflix and all these things. That is a sin. You know what that's a sin? Because it's going to lead you to horrible things, chas shalom. A person has to be careful. Life is not about wasting time in life. Life is here to be productive. Build, build, more Torah, more mitzvot. Don't sell yourself for nothing. Don't think you're only in this world for this world of the entertainment and all the physical pleasure. That's not who we are. That's not who we are as Jewish people. We're here to build and create and create. That we have animals for. We have dogs, cats, bears, elephants. They're here for this world. They just roll in the mud and they eat and they go use the bathroom and they swim. That's animals. Humans, Hashem gave them brains. He gave them sechel. He gave us brains for what? To build and build and build. Not be told what to do by the movie directors. No, 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 no. To build. Use your brains to build and create good things in this world. All the other entertainment and all these desires, that's an animalistic life. That's not who we are. We are spiritual people. We were created for bigger and better. And that is to build more Torah and more mitzvot. So when the Torah wants to describe who Paro was in this parasha, parasha Shemot, all I had to say was he was a person. Shaloya died to yourself. He was a person that was a kfu tova, a person that did not recognize the good that was done to him. And why is that so bad? Because when you don't recognize the good people do for you, it's going to lead you chas shalom to also deny how much good Hashem gives us. And that can lead to very bad things. No one wants to go to chas shalom. And when the Torah wants to describe Esav, how bad he was, all they had to say was Esav ish sadeh. He was a person that wasted his time in the field. And why is that so bad? Because a person who lives his life wasting time leads him to worse sin. Thank you so much for listening. Shabbat Shalom. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.